I call your attention to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, the 16th chapter. Ezekiel, the 16th chapter. And we're going to read verses 44 through 48. That's Ezekiel, the 16th chapter, verses 44 through 48. And I'll be reading from the NIV. The NIV, the New International Version. Ezekiel 16, chapter, starting with verse 44. And we will find these words. Everyone who quotes Proverbs will quote this proverb about you. Like mother, like daughter. You are a true daughter of your mother who despised her husband and her children. And you are a true sister of your sisters who despised their husbands and their children. Your mother was a Hittite. Your father an Amorite. Your older sister was Samaria, who lived to the north of you with her daughters. And your daughter's sister, who lived to the south of you with her daughters, was Sodom. You not only followed their ways and copied their detestable practices, but in all your ways you soon became more deprived than they. As sure as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, your sister Sodom and her daughters never did what you and your daughters have done. I want to talk about spiritual mothers. Spiritual mothers. Spiritual mothers is the subject that we're going to talk about this morning. Spiritual mothers. Spiritual mothers. Behind a great majority of people in human history who have made our world better, friendlier, and more humane have been people whose mothers were spiritual. People whose hearts have been touched by the suffering of others, whose sensitivities have been awakened by love and concern for others, and whose compassion have been stirred to help the less fortunate mm -hmm. come from the influence of spiritual mothers, grandmothers, and mother-in-laws. People who have impacted our world and helped to change the course of history and made a lasting impression upon humanity have come from spiritual mothers. The mother of Moses, Josephine, was spiritual. Ruth's mother-in-law was spiritual. Samuel the prophet's mother, Hannah, was spiritual. Jesus' mother, Mary, was spiritual. Timothy's mother and grandmother, Lois and Eunice, was spiritual. Even in our post-modern times, there were spiritual mothers behind great leaders. Mahatma Gandhi's mother was spiritual. Uh, Mother Teresa's mother was spiritual. Martin Luther King Jr. mother and grandmother was spiritual. Most of the people who have turned our world upside down and made the nations of the world more humane and more just have come from spiritual mother. Behind revolutionists, behind reformers, behind more crusades, behind social movements, behind conscientious objectors, behind liberators, and behind almost all human progress, we find spiritual mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and mother-in-law. Over the course of human history, it has been the power and the influence of spiritual mothers 
who have helped to make the world a better place in which to live. Well, what is a spiritual mother? A spiritual mother knows God. And not only knows God, but have a relationship with God. A spiritual mother embodies godly character. Meets domestic and civil responsibility. She demonstrates how to live a God-centered life. A spiritual mother prays with and for her children. She brings her children to church. She makes spiritual demands on them. She reads the word of God to her children. And she puts into practice the ethics and the principles and the values of the Christian faith. Are y'all praying with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see, a spiritual mother may not be well educated in the schools of higher learning. She may not know the writings of Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, Euripides, Aristophanes. She may not know quantum physics, thermodynamics, Einstein's theory of relativity. She may not know major theologians such as Paul Tillich, Emil Bruner, Ryan Hall and H. Richard Niebuhr and James Cole. She may not know public intellectuals like Noam Chomsky and Cornel West, but as long as she knows God and Jesus Christ his son, that's all it takes to be a spiritual mother. mother is also described in the book of Proverbs chapter 31 verses 26 through 29 it says that she speaks with wisdom and teaches others to be loving and kind she oversees the care of her house she is never lazy her children say good things about her her husband brags about her and says that there are many good women, but you are the best. Are y'all praying with me? This is the result of a spiritual mother, a virtuous woman, described in the Word of God. Now all of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Before mother ever knew God, she sinned. Before father ever knew God, he sinned. But once they became acquainted with God, once he touched their heart and involved uh, his spirit in their life, they became spiritual brothers. Are y'all praying with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My brothers and sisters, we need more spiritual mothers. Yes, mothers who take time to raise their children in the admonition of the Lord. Yes, mothers who live by example. Yes. Mothers who read and study God's word and apply it to their daily lives. Yes, mothers who are kind yes. and humble yes. and who demonstrate the fruits of the spirit. Yes which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Pray with me if you please. You see, motherhood can be a very precious thing, but if, if it's not done in the spirit, it can become an, an unpleasant experience for the children. I have seen too much tension. I have seen too much anger between mothers, husbands, and their children. All of this is a result of not living in the spirit. You see, mothers who are angry all the time, argumentative all the time, have uh, an attitude all the time. You notice what I said? I said all the time now. And trying to control everything all the time. 
time. The key word is all the time. Because all of us get like that sometimes. I'm talking about all the time. Uh, if they are like this all the time, that means that they are not living in the spirit. And until mothers live in the spirit, they will never have peace in their souls. They will never have peace between them, their husbands, nor their children. This is why homes are broken up. This is why divorce rates are astronomically high. And why children are growing up with no moral standards. Families are not living in the spirit of the Lord. Now until we come back and practice what's in the word of God. Yes, sir. There will never be joy, there will never be peace, and there will never be fulfillment in the home, in the school, in the church community, and in the nation. You see, we need more spiritual mothers yeah. who live in the spirit yeah. while raising their children. Yeah. I know children can get hard-headed sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I know they can get rebellious sometimes. Yeah. I know they need spanking sometimes. Yeah. Are y'all afraid of me? Because if you ask the parents, they also were hard-headed sometimes. Yeah. Their parents had to spank them. But see, love is not just some easy thing. If you truly love them, you'll discipline them. If you truly love them, you'll take care of them. If you truly love them, you'll point the way, the right way for them. So don't think love is some easy. Your pastor was hard-headed when I was coming up. I probably wouldn't be your pastor had I didn't have that hard love. Practice on me. But y'all pray with me. You see, when I came up in the household, sometimes my mother was so easy. Seven of us, six boys and one girl. We knew mother was easy. If daddy said no, we'll ease up to mama. Mama, daddy just don't understand. Daddy don't do this. Daddy don't know to do that. And, and, and you know what mama would say? What did your daddy say? You see, they didn't allow the children uh, to play the pairs against each other. Like children are doing today. If one pair said no, you ought to bet the other pair ought to say no. And if it's going to be the changing of the outcome, let the pairs get together and say the outcome. That's right. That's right. I remember when my brother wanted to go out with a young lady and didn't have but one cup. Daddy said, no, I ain't going to let you ride the car because you don't know how to come home. <laughs> Brother eased up to my mama and said, mama, the girl waiting on me. I promised that I would go. So instead of mama saying, go ahead, she went on in there and talked with daddy. Then daddy came back out, don't you let me miss the time you go. If you take the car at six, you better be back here at 10 o'clock. Are y'all praying with me? Mother got some influence. Even on the husband. Ask me because I know. Y'all don't think my wife got influence when it comes to those children. Ask her. Sometimes I'm mad with fire. She come and rub her head and say, honey, you know how kids are. Mother's influence. That's why children ought to be faithful for their mother. Faithful for their grandmother. Faithful for their godmother. Because if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't have access to anything. Am I going to So we need more spiritual mothers who live in the spirit while raising their children, while being home managers, and while going about their daily tasks. Mothers who allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through them are not only spiritual mothers, but they are blessed. They are more joyful. They are content. They are respected. And they are held in high esteem by their children. Now people used to talk about my daddy. That's all right. You get back talking about daddies. Your daddy this. Your daddy that. Your daddy this. But you better not say nothing about that mama. You talk about daddy all you want. But if you want to kill him, I'm telling you about what, what, I, what we grew up 
grew up with. It was off limits talking about mama. Did y'all hear what I said? See, we knew, we, we, we knew how the daddies were. And that's not against all daddies now. But you know, we man up when you talk about a daddy. But if you talk about a mama, I said, let's hit the grass. Sisters, we need more spiritual mothers. Now it doesn't matter if your mother was a hellraiser. You don't have to be a hellraiser. Doesn't matter if your mother was argumentative. You don't have to be argumentative. It doesn't matter if your mother ran the streets. You don't have to run the streets. It doesn't matter if your mother was irresponsible. You don't have to be irresponsible. You see, we don't have to make the mistakes have made. We continue to love and respect our parents, but we don't have to repeat their mistakes and have their same experiences. We have too many children in trouble. We have too many children facing a hostile and ungodly world. Too many children are dying too soon. Our juvenile detentions are too chronic with young people for mothers not to live in the spirit of the law. You see, I agree with Dr. Alice von Hildebrand, a Catholic philosopher and theologian uh, who said motherhood is more important uh, than biological motherhood. You see, there are plenty of women who are biological mothers and yet not mothers at all. You see, some consider that child to be a nuisance and a mistake. Said, I don't want it. Take, for instance, women who have an abortion for convenience sake. God offers them a tremendous gift, but they say, no, I don't want it. It's going to disturb me. In today's language, they say, it's going to cramp my style. You see, sin cramps your style. Not the child. No correction. 
God sent the prophet Ezekiel to lift up his voice in Judah. Yes, Ezekiel told Judah, everyone who, who uh, quotes the proverb will quote this proverb about you. Like mother, like daughter. You are a true daughter of your mother who despised her husband and her children. And you are a true sister of your sister who despised their husband and their children. Your mother was a Hittite and your father an Amorite. Your older sister was Samaria who lived to the north of you with her daughters. And your sister, sister who lived to the south of you, her daughters were Sodom. You not only followed their ways and comfort, their detestable practices, but in all your ways you soon become, became more deprived than they are. Surely as I live, declares the Lord, your sister Sodom and her sisters never did what you have done and what your daughters have done. In other words, he talked about the twin sisters. The twin sisters. Judah was supposed to be the city where they were supposed to be the moral example for Sodom and Samaria. And they kind of bragged that they had a little more education. They were a little more upscale than Samaria and Sodom. But God said, you act just like your mother. Your mother and daughter are just alike. Are y'all crazy? I'm talking about cities now. Are y'all crazy? The immorality had reached such geometric proportion that God had to send the prophet to one of the people. The point I'm making is that Judah had no spiritual mother to help teach and guide the daughter sister cities of Sodom and Samaria. They all fell to a shameful level. And Judah had become worse than the two daughter sisters. The same thing is going on in many cities across America. Whole lot of stuff going on. Mother and daughter going with the same man. Daughter doing some of everything. And mother giving the approval to do it. If they want to have sex in the home, mother giving approval. I'm telling you that America has become a cesspool of immorality. And if anything is going to change, we need spiritual mothers to step back in. We need spiritual grandmothers to step back in. We need spiritual godmothers to step back in. Because they know, they know that it's going to take heaven to influence the hell situation that we are in. Spiritual mothers know that if redemption is to come, if reform is to come, if deliverance is to come, if our sons and our daughters are to be rescued from the death trap of the enemy, the church, the community, and the nation must turn back to God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible said, if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal their land. Spiritual mothers know that this is the solution. And if, if we do what God says do, uh, our land can be healed. Spiritual mothers know that if we come back to God, that God will have mercy on us. Spiritual mothers know that if we come back to God, God will turn our darkness into light. God will turn our child into testimony. God will turn our brokenness into blessings. God will turn our shame into shining stars. God will turn our rebellion into redemption. We need a spiritual mother to step up to the plate. Mothers, I know you've had a hard time, but you got to do it again. Your children in trouble. The grandchildren are in trouble. The godchildren are in trouble. And I know, mother, we can't get a prayer through. I know you can. There's something about your prayer that touches the heart of God. And if you get out on your knees and tell the Lord, I know you able. I know you can. But I just wonder if you will. Bless my son. Bless my daughter. Bless my grandchildren. If God, if you come back, and if you show your children 
what it means to be a spiritual mother. That make all the difference in the world. We need those spiritual mothers because I'm telling you, they no longer have the example before me. I thank God that I come from a spiritual mother. I got beatings, yes. My father told y'all that. I was a mischievous child. But it wasn't nothing that the belt couldn't handle. It wasn't nothing that discipline couldn't handle. And not only could, could my parents get me, my other spiritual mothers could get me. Sometimes they got me for something I didn't do. I think that was a woman named Mrs. Bradford. And she couldn't see good. Oh, but there was some, some noise going on in the church. She would always think it was me. She'd go up and tell my father, that boy of yours is something else. He'd come on and whoop my behind. But as long as you know God's word, you may not know the whole Bible, nobody knows the whole Bible. But grab hold of one or two scriptures. And God will move for those one or two scriptures. Because his word ain't going to come back more. If you pray to him, if all you know is Lord, my, my shepherd, that'll move God. If all you know, he'll be bread for you. That'll move God. If all you know, Sodom and Gerard. And 
we need some spiritual mothers yeah. to call on God yeah. to help save yeah. the sick and immoral nation of ours. Yeah. So mothers, I want to say to you, I love you. My hat goes off to you. You got a hard job. Yeah. I'm so glad God made me a man. <laughs> But I'm telling you the truth. I see what a woman goes through with pregnancy. I saw what she went through. Pain. Go through all that eight, nine, six times a day or two trying to birth a child in the world. Go through all that headache and then that child get in the world and want to disrespect their mother. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I can go You don't know what your mother did to get you here. Yeah. 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 So when you see children disrespect their mothers, their grandmothers, yeah. their godmothers, yeah. all you got to do is give them a sign and say, baby, don't do that. Right. See, it's a little bit easier today. Yeah. Yesterday, when I was coming up, it wasn't no easy thing. Yeah. They grab your ear and see if they could twist it off. <laughs> They wanted to make the point, you don't do that. Yeah. And we got to get the village back in place. You know, it does say it takes a village to raise children. We got to get the village back. Just like Nehemiah. We got the wall back. And if we can get the village back, where everybody watching out for each other's child, guide them along the right way. Our communities will get better. But we got to repair the village. And who's best to know how to do that? Mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, and mother-in-law. And even if the man don't want to act right, mother, you know what to do. Don't you? I ain't gonna go no further. But we need more spiritual mothers. Amen. And so I want all of you young people to become a spiritual mother. Amen. Read God's word, pray to him, and become a spiritual mother. Amen. I'm not saying you don't have those other responsibilities, but your first priority yes. is to become a spiritual mother. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Oh. And these other things will be added to you. I'm going to ask that Reverend Huntley would come and that she would pray for us. That God would bless us to produce more spiritual mothers, grandmothers, godmothers, mother in law. Lord, is truly 
Yes. Because physical looks are, are fading. But it's you, it's the, it's the spirit of you within us as women oh. that is truly beautiful. Yeah. It's our souls that are truly beautiful. Yeah. Lord God, allow us to be reflections of this yeah. in your world, Lord God. Yeah. So that we can bring other young women yeah. to show them what true beauty is. True beauty is not necessarily what the dress you have on or how your face is made up, but it's the true beauty of the soul. of your holiness. Hallelujah. Lord God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, Lord God. Let us get back to the old school, Lord God. Let us get back to the old school of how we raised young women, Lord God. Let us get back to those principles, Lord God. Growing women, young women up as a reflection. Yeah, it's only through you, God, that we can raise these girls. It's only through you. I thank God for my mother and my grandmother for keeping me in church. Yeah. Hallelujah. I thank God for the foundation that they have given me. That is something that we have, that will never be taken away. Yeah. And as I grew up and grew as an adult young woman, the spirit of the Lord just took over me. Even when I strayed away. Hallelujah. Even when I strayed away from where you wanted me to be, God, you brought me back home. Yeah. Hallelujah. I thank God for a praying mother and a praying grandmother yeah. and praying cousins and a praying auntie. I thank God, Lord God, you knew where I was going to be even yeah. when I was doing my own thing. I thank you, Jesus. Lord God, help us raise these girls. Help us raise these young men yes. to be godly. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not just planting their seed to and fro, having baby after baby after baby, and only being a father to whoever woman they choose to be with that month, Lord God. Help us, Lord. Bring our families back under your fold, Lord God. Lord God, I ask you to preserve the institution of marriage back in the black community, Lord God. of generational curses, Lord God. Yeah. Lord God, I ask you to break the bondage of generational curses, having all of these babies with different men, Lord God. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Lord God, that wasn't your plan. Yeah. Lord God, I just ask you, God, to bring the family back under your fold. Yeah. Lord God, bring the black men back in church, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Bring them back in church, Lord God. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Get them off the streets, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Ah! Hallelujah. Bring them back in church, Lord God. Yeah. Lord God, we depend on them. We need them as young black women. We need them. Yeah. We need them. Yeah. We need them to stand up for you. Yeah. You said the man is the priest of the house, but what, we, what do we do when the man is not there? Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. The enemy will not win. He will not win. Hallelujah. Lord God, it's under your control. Yes. It's under your control, Lord God. I know you got it. My faith will not waver. Lord God, build up the faith of our black community, Lord God. Build up our faith, Lord God. Close our eyes to what we see around us and build up our faith with spiritual eyes. Lord God, and these children that are motherless and fatherless, Lord God. I ask you, God, to bring the spiritual mothers around them, Lord yes. God. A spiritual mother may not have any biological children of her own, but she is such, such an example for so many. Yes. Lord God, I ask you to allow me to be a spiritual mother, Lord God, yes. that I may be a reflection of some young woman in her life, Lord God. Lord God, help us, Jesus. We need your help. Lord God, I pray over the sick and the shunning today. I pray over my, my dear sister Stacey Hill, Lord God, for the loss of her brother, Lord God. I don't know what she's going through, the torment and the pain, Lord God. But I know that you know, Lord God. And I just ask you to soothe her heart in the midnight hour, Lord God. When she can no longer smile anymore, Lord God, because the tears just overflow, Lord God. I ask you, God, to soothe her heart, Lord God. And give her faith knowing that she will see her brother again. Lord God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God. I thank you for so many deaths going on. All the bereaved families, Lord God. Lord God, give them faith and strength.
strength to move on and to, to move on with life knowing that they're going to see their loved one again. I give you glory, God. And I give you honor. Lord God, keep us, Lord God. When so much is going on. We just ask you to keep us. Keep us in your bosom, Lord God. And Jesus pray. We pray. Amen. Amen.